In the diamond menu is a tools looking uh, icon, and that's gonna take us into our set menu. You will have a variety of different options across the top, and it brings us into the sewing settings. That's actually the one with the little needle and scissors. That's a little highlighted right now, but there's actually one even before it. But just for example, we'll just start going through all of these. Anything with a check mark box is gonna be remembered for like when you turn the machine off, um, it'll come back on. These are things that are permanent and you can change it as needed. So for the first one, twin needle, if we touch it, it's gonna tell, let us pick, okay, I am adding on a 3.0, the size of twin needle. And then what it's gonna do is that will actually show you, I really like this part. It actually shows you what the stitch is gonna look like when you have that size of needle on. So it's actually kind of fun. You can go through all your stitches. Even the utility ones look kind of fun when you start to add a twin needle element to your stitches. So we always tell you stitch out all your stitches. Well, now you should stitch them out with all the twin needle options <laughs> and I'll take you uh, quite a while. Uh, so when you're done, go in and turn it off. But what I like about it is if I leave my twin needle on and this setting on and I turn my machine off, tomorrow when I turn it on, there'll be a little message that pops up that says, by the way, you still have the twin needle function engaged. Next is the stitch width safety. If you are going to be using that straight stitch throw plate, when you put this on, this will automatically engage. But when you take it off, you'll need to come into the sewing settings in the set menu and turn it off. So if you get a little pop-up message that that limitation is on, that's where you have to manually go and say, okay, I have removed that plate. Let me go ahead and pick uh, stitches that are zigzag or have whipped to them. The selective thread cutter, that's the cutter that is on the top um, for your needle and thread. Um, that you can sometimes have it where it doesn't automatically cut. So if you ch choose to turn that off, you can. Automatic jump stitch trim, that's gonna be for embroidery. And there are times like in between sometimes my small lettering, I do not want it to trim in between every single letter. Trust me on that. Um, we'll get into that with embroidery. Sensor foot, presser foot lift. Sometimes I don't want it to always lift. Every time I am in a pivot position, we can turn that off. Uh, fix auto fixes that locking stitch that happens at the beginning of your stitching. You can actually not have that if you choose not to. Uh, sometimes I don't always want it to lock. I just need it to start sewing and I don't want it to take those extra stitches. So just a little remove of the checkbox will do that. Feed teeth options, those are the feed dogs. I usually leave it on auto, but if there's ever a time where you need to manually lower it down or make sure it's up when it is down, um, you can override the default of auto setting. So that's kind of a nice newer feature. Let me just come back to one here. Uh, the stitch settings, this is a balance. Now, since I came into this with a straight stitch selected, I'm gonna come out and pick, let's go to A2 and our honeycomb stitch and go back to our diamond and our set menu. The stitch, if there's ever a time where the stitch, when it stitches forward and back, it doesn't line up. Maybe you're working on something with a nap or some corduroy. This is the balance screen. So what you can actually do is balance this left or right or up or down and make it actually work. It actually looks correct. This is also the screen if you wanna adjust the pressure more or less than what the machine automatically does, this is where you do it. Okay, so we've already done the sewing settings. Next is the sewing machine. So we have the language of your choice, so English, your name, if you have put it on there, the timer since the last time you have reset it. So if I touch that, that will reset the timer. Reset it, yes, I will, okay. And then it'll go back to zero. So if you're timing a project of how long it takes, this is your personal timer. Now internally, there is on the service side a a timer or recording time, an odometer that cannot be reset. That is actually um, always going. So you can touch that without ever interrupting the other one. Hoop selection, when you're in embroidery, you might like to tell the machine that you only have the three hoops that came with the machine, which happens to be the 120 by 120, the 360 by 200 and the 260 by 200. And then that way the machine only will allow you to pick those three hoops and will only choose those three hoops for you. Right now it might cho choose a random other hoop if your design better fits that hoop. And then you're like, wait, I don't have that hoop. And so it is nice to tell the machine your hoops 
and then uh, you're set for later. And uh, just remember, if you buy a new hoop, you need to come back in here and check the box of your new hoop so it can actually allow you to use it. Otherwise, it will kind of go, please attach correct hoop, even though you're trying to use a different one. So just have to remember that um, as you go. Auto smart saves. When your machine comes to you, I believe this is not checked. I'm not sure why, but you do need to go in here and check it. This is going to save your embroidery. Um, during the middle of embroidery, whether you just turn off your machine in the middle or if you lose power, um, it allows you to bring the embroidery back exactly where you left off tomorrow, which is absolutely fabulous. A lot of times at the store when we're embroidering, we get to the end of the day, we don't get our design done, we'll just turn it off and tomorrow we just reselect it because it saved it right at our last stitch. Thread manufacturer, you can actually choose between uh, Robus and Anton and Sulky as which colors are going to be shown in the embroidery world. Thread tension and portioning compensations, you can actually adjust this. I usually kind of leave it just at normal, but if there's a case where you do need to increase it, it's kind of like thread tension, but it's a global thread tension. Depending on some of your threads you're using, you will find the time where you might want to decrease or increase, depending on what you have in your bobbin and in your needle at one particular time. The deluxe stitch system, yes, leave that on. That really makes a difference for all your um, pieces and parts here. Oh, sensor cue for embroidery. That's that white cue foot. That's what you will be using for embroidery. If for any reason you're not using that, um, that needs to be unchecked for a different setting. But that does come on, I believe, when your machine comes to you. So plan to use it at all times. Okay, uh, next one over, sound settings. Right now when I touch something, you're hearing a little click, but if you wish to change it to be other things or none off, uh, you can actually change the chirp or zap or knock or define it with your own personal um, options. You would load a sound via your USB stick. So we are not going to do that and I will leave it just as the way it is. Um, icon, button icon disabled. Uh, again, just leave the beeps where you want them to be. If there's a warning, it's gonna beep three times. When the embroidery is finished, it's got a nice pretty sound, which I love. And the startup sound, once again, you can actually define your own music should you wish to, or I have had customers have their machine in rooms where other people are uh, resting or sleeping and they turn that off so people don't know when they actually turn the machine on. All right, audio repeat. Uh, once again, I have forgotten what that one is, uh, but then we also have the volume so we can do that. Um, oh, I think this is an error message where it will repeat if there needs to be uh, where you're notif being notified on that. And, okay, so the last one is for screen and lighting settings, um, touch screen adjust. Now, I am going to touch this, but don't do it on yours unless you absolutely have to. On occasions, and it actually happened to this machine when I first got it, the screen was not calibrated. And when I touched one icon, the one below it actually engaged. And that was, <laughs> I was always wondering why some I couldn't touch. And what it was is just the off, it was just off. So what you would do is, and this is nice that you can do it, you don't have to take it to your dealer. You touch this part here, or try to touch it, get it set up. And you're gonna take your um, stylus here and very carefully touch the exact middle and hold it in the middle of this little plus. And as it moves from corner to corner and then back to the center, it will recalibrate your screen. And believe me, it makes all the difference in the world. A uh, lock screen, that's where you can actually set it so there, um, the screen is locked. Uh, screen saver, you'll notice if you don't use it for a while, it will uh, go to the pretty blue screen. Um, adjustable e-light, this will actually, if you kind of watch in this area over here, uh, you can adjust the brightness for the, the light. So you can slide it or touch it. So it's brighter here. I always like lots of light. Now notice over here, I've, I'm over on the cool side and right now it looks very blue in here. But if I slide this over, now you're going to see it kind of looks pink or red in this area. There's times where you work on certain colors of fabric or there is a reflection on a shiny fabric. Sometimes machine quilting on a dark fabric, it's hard to see where you're going. And you can actually play with this color and you can almost get a, um, an iridescent or a glow on colors that are very hard to see. So you will just need to play with this uh, based on your lighting and your fabric, your thread and everything. And you can really get that to be a nice setting. Once it's set and you touch OK, everything that you have told it you like will stay even after your machine is turned off.